thank you so much for your company this morning. Now, last October, Kiwi actor Bruce Hopkins set off on the Te Araroa Trail, travelling over 3,000 kilometres from Cape Reinga to Stewart Island. His goal was to raise money for local charity Grandparents Raising Grandchildren. The journey took him six and a half months with some injuries and even surgery for cancer along the way. He finished the walk in May and he joins us right now. It is so great to have you here, Bruce. Cool. It is a real pleasure to be here. You've done so many things. Um, let me get this right. Professional dancer, uh, cray fisherman. That is a really tough job. I've actually been a deckhand on a cray fisherman boat. That is tough. People uh, used to say to me, gosh, acting must be hard. And it was like, well, have a go at cray fishing. <laughs> have you baited up a pot <laughs> yeah, and sort of yeah, six feet yeah. swells? Um, you've been a radio host. And of course, you were gambling in Lord of the Rings and the trilogy for that too. And now you can add to that list adventure as well. That's quite something. Adventure. I like that's my favourite title of the ones you've read out. Yeah. I so, think. so given what you've done, what was your main motivation for doing this crazy walk? Well, the, the initial, um, when I heard about Jeff Chappell, I had to in introduce this guy, Jeff Chappell. I was emceeing a, uh, a fundraiser and he created the trail. It took him a couple of decades to get it up and running. So I researched him for a bio, you know, and Tartador Trail, what's that? As soon as I saw what it was, it was like a missing link in my life wow. um, about establishing my belonging in this land and expressing my gratitude for being born in this land. But the thing about this was is that you hadn't actually done any tramping <laughs> no. before you decided to walk <laughs> 3,000 kilometres. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a bit like going from crayfishing. I, I actually, during the time, it was like, no, this is actually the same experience of when I was a crayfisherman and I first saw dance, it was just like, I have to do that. I have to go and try. And so there was not even like a decision. It was, um, so yeah, it was like a missing link for me. And so I did 10 months training, put weights in a pack. I'd get out and walk up and down hills every day. And then I- But hills around your suburb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, around the city. And uh, I, I'd go into the Waitakere's every now and then for a bit, bit of a longer walk. And that was really interesting. And then uh, about a month before the gig, I set off for an overnighter in the Kaimais with the Auckland Tramping Club. And that was a bit of an eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> Took a tumble in a river and split my knee. It was, oh, 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 what am I doing? That, what am yeah. I signing myself up for? <laughs> that was so, one night. And yeah, I've got 3,000 yeah, yeah. Ks to go. Yeah. So you went from, where does the trail start? Did you start in the well, North Island? The two, the two uh, it's Bluff and Cape Reinga. Most right. people do Cape Reinga to Bluff. Yes. But like when I hit the South Island, uh, so about kind of three months, two and a half months of South Island, I, that's when I first started seeing people coming north. Right. Um, called Northbounders. Right. And uh, and they a lot of them just do the South Island. They uh, there's a quite a bit of ro there's a, a reasonable amount of road walking in the North Island which people end up not enjoying. Right. Mm. Right. Now you were I mean you were out there on your own. Well, I mean you obviously had people and there was tourists and there was you met up with people but you were fundamentally doing this on your own, weren't you? Yeah, you, and especially, again, especially when you hit the South Island, you have to, uh, you send food parcels to yourself because you're going through three, four weeks at a time, you're, you're, you're completely away so from what, anything. what was the loneliest part for you? There wasn't, well, I actually, my morale, I, I hit my lowest point of morale when I hit Southland after Queenstown uh, got through, went into the Mavora Lakes, the Queenstown track, and then into the Mavora Lakes. And there's a Takitimu forest down in Southland, and I took a tumble in a river. I'm on my own. It'd been three days of just really cold mist and rain. I was wet anyway, and when I fell in a river, I hurt myself. But also, um, just the energy it takes to pick yourself up, and mm. you're in a river, it's, you're feeling endangered. I got to the hut where I was heading to there, the, um, the lower Wairaki hut, and it didn't have a really good fire. <laughs> like I couldn't get a good fire oh, going. So, so it was it was pretty. I was pretty low at that point. Didn't not so much lonely, just over it. Right, know. but just a little bit more to go, and then you would have been done. Yeah. yeah. What did you notice on that journey? Because it's probably a journey that a lot of people get to do. So were there things that you noticed? Um, I've, I'm just reading the book Wild Boy, Brando. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know that's a whole other level gig, and of course. You know, 62 years old, 20 something years old, that makes a bit of a difference too. But what he keeps pointing out in that book, and this is one of the things that I kept seeing, is even though you're out in the, in the bush and in the mountains and the rivers and everything, it's the people that you come across, whether it's the other people who are attempting the trail or the Kiwis when you come past uh, th or through the small towns and everything, they're called trail angels. Right. These people mm. just pop up, and it's the true, it's that spirit of New Zealand that we like to think. 
is New Zealand? Well, it, it does exist it and it's actually, out there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But you, you were also diagnosed with bladder cancer and you had surgery while you were doing this walk. Yes. Did that make you, did you ever think about giving up? No, no, no. It, was, it didn't, it, somehow, it was a symptom. <laughs> we'll get personal here. It was a symptom called hematuria, which is, I had black urine. And it felt like I was in a science fiction mm. movie when I first saw it. It was like, whoa. Got scanned. It turned out to be a, a small cancer mass. So um, got booked in for a chop that out. And, <laughs> and then carried on. Out. Yeah, yeah. I was, oh, um, the surgeon said, you know, I could get going two, two weeks after. So. Well, that would have been quite a spiritual uh, journey after that, which brings me nicely to the next question. The, the ashes. You were going to take your brother and your <laughs> yeah, father. <I'm> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't mention the ashes. <laughs> but yeah. did you lose them or what happened I there? Did, I did. I did. I, I was back in Auckland, coming through Auckland. I have grandkids myself. Took two of them out to do something. And I, and I had a little waist belt that I had the ashes in. And I'd taken that with me um, just as a sort of money belt and as much as anything on this particular day, but it had the ashes in a separate little pouch. I have no idea where I've left it. I went back to the three places I went to, wow. twice, never turned up. Fortunately, my sister-in-law, Joelle, still had some of my brother Doug's ashes, right. so I was able to top those up. <laughs> and I knew Mum had some of Dad's, so... Oh, they would have been so laughing what, what at you. you yeah. Your yeah, they would have been laughing. That. They would have thought it was a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for a start, they would have said, get a bloody bus, take a plane, <laughs> whatever. You know, yeah, don't involve us in this. <laughs> and then when I lose the ashes, they, that would have been typical. <laughs> <laughs> and what was, the, um, what was the link to grandparents that are raising children, that charity that you yeah. really wanted to support? Well, you know, it, essentially I was doing it all for me, and, and then, then the thing of cray fishing off Cape Reinga, but originally from Stewart Island, that's where my brother and my two sisters, Lindley and Wanda, and I were born fourth generation. So it was like, oh, cool, I can carry Dad and Doug's, symbolically, you know, carry mm. some of their ashes with me and take them home. Um, and then that was still all about me, really. And then I was talking to Elizabeth Vanneveld, a wonderful woman, and she was saying, you know, have you thought about doing some fundraising, which I had. Brilliant. And yeah. so that kicked me into going, right, well, let's do this fundraising thing. Being a grandparent, I'd known about that organisation. And the people, there are way too many grandparents having mm. to raise their grandkids in this country at the moment, and especially mm. at the moment, we're in the, the meth epidemic, and it's, um, it's increasing their yes. numbers. There's like 70 people a month, 70 families a month are calling them and joining to find out what resources they can call on and ask for help and everything. So it's an amazing cause. And when I was feeling sorry for myself on the tramp, I literally, I would put my head to going, yeah, yeah, but these grandparents don't get to pull out. They're they pretty amazing. Every day they have to get up and do this. Well, we could talk about this for a lot longer, but we'll run out of time. I'm so fascinating. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bruce's journey, cool. The Long Way Home, is detailed on his Facebook page. And you should watch that space, actually. Make sure you check it out. <laughs>